here in a minute. Listen to the people. Listen to humanity. Listen to the parent. Parent TV. Parent TV. Parent TV. Parent TV. Parent TV. Do you know that there is a publishing company that wants to make life easier? for you as a writer. This publishing company is called World Inkers Printing and Publishing. We publish in all different languages and we're looking for writers of all genres, all formats. We're looking for scholars, ghost writers, playwrights, poets, short fiction, novelists, you name it. We're looking for anybody who is interested in writing and the craft of writing to be in touch with us. You can reach us at info.worldinkers at gmail.com. With World Inkers Printing and Publishing, you do not require a lot of money to publish with us. Contact us today at info.worldinkers at gmail.com. Become a winner with other authors at World Inkers Printing and Publishing. Give us a shot. We will surely finish you. Hello, welcome to World Inkers Network, a Parrot TV program. I'm Dustin Pickering, your noble and honest host. And today we have... Manakshi Goswami, who is the principal of CNS Higher Secondary School, Tezpur Sanatpur, Assam, a member of the Northeast Writers Forum India. She is also into sports organizations and anchoring at various functions. She has been awarded on International Women's Day 2007 by the Indian Medical Association and on India's Republic Day 2019 by the government of Assam for her dedicated service towards human resources, arts, and culture. She has been awarded the state award for teachers by government of Assam on the 5th of September, 2018. She is a proud recipient of the prestigious Ol Shakshaya Ratnam <laughs> this is very sorry. Puraskar 2016, in recognition of all round excellence as an educationist. Her debut book of poems, The Sensuous Zephyr, was launched in Melbourne on 11th of January 2014, where she was invited for a poetry session. Manakshi Goswama also participated in many international poetry festivals. Her poems are published in many national and international multilingual anthologies. She's been conferred the Star Ambassador of World Literature by Philosophique Poetica and Grand Canada at World Poetry Conference for her contribution to world literature as a poet, a committed educator, and scholar of high order. The Sensuous Zephyr and Waltzing Words are two of her most famous poetry books. As an outstanding interpreter of poetry and an excellent poet, Manakshi has attended many poetry festivals in India and abroad. Thanks for joining us today, Manakshi. How are you doing? Yeah, I'm fine. And thank you very much, Dustin, uh, for being involved in this World Inkers uh, Network live. And uh, though there was some hazards in the link, but anyway, very nice. Hello. Uh, it's nice to see you. And Good, good, good evening to you, and it's morning for me, so good morning yeah, to me. Yeah, yeah, good morning to you. <laughs> Always those large-scale yes. time differences between between yeah, yeah, continents yeah. there. Uh, so my first question would be, when when did you get started with poetry, and what prompted your, you know, your poetic response to the world? Okay, initially, I uh, had poetry uh, in my mind uh, right from when I was young, of course. And I used to gradually, I used to jot down here and there, and I used to keep those uh, jotting down poems, or rather you can say words. Uh, and I write it down in papers and used to put under my pillow or my uh, the mattress, and I kept it there, and after gradually, I started uh, giving it to some newspapers like uh, the daily newspapers here in Assa, and they get it published. And then I started uh, to publish in some magazines, then anthologies, and of course, uh, my debut book uh, came. Of course, it was uh, right from the 1990s I have been jumping down and getting it printed in 2000. And that's how maybe from 2000 onwards, it's been publishing. And yes, the first book, The Sensuous Zephyr, which was launched in Melbourne, Australia, was 
a compilation of all those uh, poems that was uh, published here and there and some few with a, it is a 50 um, poems collection the first book the debut book that was the sense was zephyr was a collection of a treasury of love you can say uh, mm -hmm. all the 50 poems were love love in love in a wider angle love for the mother love for the son love for friends love for siblings love for nature for culture for a festival and everything that is love that uh, was the first book and of course the second one waltzing words was later on uh, published uh, uh, last year in september 2021 so, so would, that uh -huh. Oh, I was going to ask what uh, what kind of differences do you detect in your in your style between the two books? Okay, the first one was uh, absolutely love that uh, I can say, but the second one, uh, basically, I'm a very optimist type of a person, a very positive type of a person. But uh, in the second book, uh, there are some kind of uh, a revolt in me i don't know when i'm the second one basically when i'm uh, angry uh, when i got angry when i got uh, disappointed with something uh, i wrote so in walsing words i love all the poems no doubt uh, since i have written definitely i love all the poems but and in the second one there are some um, some flavors of uh, getting angry negativism and uh, that is that is the basic difference of the first mm -hmm. and the second mm -hmm. book the first one out and out a positive one a love poem the okay. second was was here and there on any theme actually it's a melange it's waltzing words i have the second one with me right now i can show if you can see it uh, this is waltzing words so huh uh, this is waltzing words, and uh, I have uh, uh, it, it's a, a waltz of words. So that is the basic thing in my interesting. So it's sort of an interplay of of words. What yeah, what kind of uh, stylistics do you develop in your poetry? Pardon. What kind of stylistics do you develop in your poetry? Do you have a, a you know, like an original no, no, reverse? It's, or... The yonas are nothing. I don't have any specific styles. It's just the flow of words. Uh, mm -hmm. There may be sometimes they are rhyming, rhythmic, or maybe just flow of words. I scatter whatever kinds to my mind. I don't have any uh, specific styles or anything. That is a thing, so that uh, I don't have that sort of uh, styles or something like that. It's very simple, lucid, mm -hmm. uh, go with the flow. When you read the my poems, it'll just I go on. That is the thing only. Do you have a, an idea of human nature that informs your writing? Yeah, uh, everything, everything, uh, whatever I write, I uh, at the point of writing, when I start writing, there is something in my mind. Of course, later on, with two, three lines, of course, that comes the creativity. Mm -hmm. I create then. But of course, the starting, maybe the title, maybe the starting point, or at some time, at one point of time, maybe the end of the poem, uh, there are some specific things uh, which triggers me to write, and with that I write. Otherwise, uh, mainly it's creativity, and I maybe sometimes one word will inspire me to write. Mm. I speak with someone, and in my mother tongue, when I speak, I uh, my mother tongue is Assamese. We say I'm from Assam, so Assamese. So when people sometimes they say, what is this word? Please translate it to English. And I find that word is very interesting. The word, when I translate from my mother tongue to English, that word itself is very inspiring for me. And uh, from that word, the whole thing I create. It's simply creativity. So it's just sort of like a, out of nothing in a way. Like you just write out of yeah. nothing. 
That's pretty, yeah. that's pretty yeah. fascinating. Do you find that your love of words is inborn or is it, is it something that uh, you think uh, you developed over time? I, of course, I developed over time because uh, since English is not my mother tongue, of course, mm -hmm. uh, definitely I have to cultivate it. And uh, of course, uh, my I studied in an English in a convent school. Uh, so the schooling helped um, and um, I keep on speaking, though the, my mother tongue is different. I work in a vernacular medium of school and uh, there also there is no, I create the ambience of speaking English. And from there, and of course, it will find very simple and silly. Uh, all the time, I keep a dictionary with me. So words, 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 like Shakespeare said, words. So I develop and I, uh, that is, I cultivate, I cultivate, you can say I cultivated. Words Absolutely. And of course, uh -huh. yeah, <laughs> that is the thing. So Do you have favorite uh, poets you read regularly? I don't have such uh, favorite, you can say the, romanticism period or uh, when we go back to literature for Wordsworth, Keats, Shelley, Byron, those were salute. So those I think I read and other, all the poems, I don't have anything as such special as such. Whenever, whatever you write, I enjoy. Whenever, whatever other poets write, I read. And I find it very interesting and when I find it interesting, I go deep into the words and those create a very big impression on my mind that, yes, this is the thing I'm going to create. That is the thing. Mm. So that way, so not as I'm a, I'm a regular reader of anyone. Whatever is good is nice. I accept and I praise. I love. <laughs> that is the thing. So, as a as a critic, as a literary enthusiast and critic, uh, you know what? How do you develop like a knack for a reading skill to understanding poetry as a student? Yeah, as a student, uh, uh, I, uh, I uh, read poetry that way, and poetry is the yeah. I loved poetry since my school days. No one helped. I'm telling you truly the fact with due honor to my teachers that actually no one motivated me to read uh, poetry or write poetry or in a sense it was just uh, uh, we went to school, teachers teach and that, that I started loving on my own. On my own I started loving poetry and uh, Yes, I thought that this is the medium I want to express myself. Whatever. When I'm happy, I write. When I'm uh, sad, I write. And more especially in, uh, in my later book, when I was angry, I write. That keeps me when I'm tensed. As you know, I am the principal. I head a school. So mm -hmm. there are a lot of tensions. And to release those tensions, I write poetry and when i come back home from school i keep the work aside though i'm overloaded since it's a government school i have a huge lot of responsibilities and tensions i leave those aside and start jotting down to ease to my mind to i mean i feel comfortable so that is do, do the uh current religious conflicts in India inspire you to write poetry? I you mean, know, I have anger or frustration with the bigotry going on and the, so forth. Okay. Uh, actually, I don't uh, pay much attention to the religious conflicts or whatsoever because mm -hmm. I'm basically a lover. I am a lover of humanity. Mm -hmm. I am a lover. I am a Hindu by religion. Whenever I, I see a church, and in the name of the Father and Son, Holy Spirit, Amen. Mm -hmm. I pray. 
whoever, whatever religion, whatever, when I see a church, I bow down. When I see a, uh, whatever, uh, Gurdwara, Sikh, uh, religion, mosque, when I see there also, I think there is a super uh, power there up above us. So I don't believe in, uh, I don't believe in a particular religion. So I respect all religion. I may sound very diplomatic, but yes, that is the fact I pray everywhere. So mm. I don't, those things don't disturb me. In fact, I don't like all those things fighting against each other. That is again, totally against humanity. And this is why I write poetry, poetry to unite people right. of the world poetry to unite the people of the world in different absolutely uh, yeah uh, yeah so. bring people together so that we can understand each other as individuals as, and understand each other's perspectives to the art of poetry are there any other art forms that inspire your writing like music uh, yeah, or architecture yeah, and, and now as of now i have i have jotted down few i don't want to uh, read it now of course now I am interested uh, in haiku. Mm -hmm. <laughs> of late, of late, I am interested and in planning to bring out a poetry book. You can say poetry book uh, collection of haiku. So something haiku. Mm -hmm. I don't know haiku inspire. I mean, it attracts me. I don't know. I I love reading haikus. So mm -hmm. I'm planning for it, and uh, all the time that five seven five comes in my mind. Mm. Five seven five, five seven five. When will I create that? Of course, I think uh, those who write haikus, they are really indeed. Uh, I appreciate them uh, because it is not that easy to write haiku. I think, as for myself, maybe those who write, uh, they'll find it easy. But uh, I think I'll have to write uh, haiku. I'm planning to that. So that is the basic thing. And of course, bo uh, my first book is uh, going to be translated uh, into Asmis into our mother tongue by some good writers. He is uh, writing, working on it as of now because uh, they find my uh, writing good. But at the same time, when you translate, the flavor, sometimes the flavor isn't there. So that is what is uh, going on. And That's of course, uh, short story also, I'm interested. I did mm -hmm. write few short stories, uh, short stories, you can say. And those are linked with uh, what happened to me. Or whenever I see a small incident, of course, that inspires me to write even short stories. Hmm. I what uh, what writer or poet in, you know originally sparked your interest in, in writing and poetry? I cannot name as such who exactly, uh, but uh, again I'll go back uh, to our very own old uh, writers, poets like Wordsworth, Shelley, Kids, and those. When I read their poems and John Donne, uh, all those poetry, I'm a student of literature. I studied them. And those, those were the poets who really inspired me into poetry. Yes, you can say that. Those were the things that inspired me to write. I mean, I'm motivated. Sure. I enjoyed reading to speak the truth. Even the latest writers and all, but mostly the oldies I love. Oldies you can see ever. Uh, kids, uh, Shelley, Byron, uh, Wordsworth, all those. And even sonnets of Shakespeare, really. I mean, I love, I love the sonnets of Shakespeare. Wonderful. So they are, they're they're quite me. beautiful. Yeah, mm -hmm. absolutely. So I think we're going to take a brief break, but we'll be back with some of your poetry if you want to read for us. Um, yes, yes. I, I would love. I would love. I would love. Okay. Okay. Brief commercial break. break. Okay. Okay. 
All roads lead to the land of Teringa, the home of hospitality. Join us as we put Senegal in the brightest spotlight in Africa for the historic inaugural Daylight Africa Week, also known as Transatlantic Family Reunification Week and African Open House Week. Daylight Africa Week event is scheduled to be officially launched in the Senegambia region of Africa, specifically in Dakar, in the first week of September 2022 at King Fat Palace Hotel, Dakar, Senegal, founded by African Union Day Foundation, AUDF, in New York City. The historical events will be graced by numerous diaspora Africans, American citizens, spiritual leaders and some New York elected officials who have shown interest in visiting Africa and exploring its grandeur. President Macky Sall, current chairman of the African Union, shall lead the launching of the most transformative initiative for the continent. Join us for the epoch-making event which features orientation and dinner with Senegalese president, Daylight Africa Week and Stem Up Africa Luncheon Celebration, visitation to Gori Island and sightseeing, meeting with American ambassador and dinner with the press in Gambia, African Junior Day celebration with the First Lady and Odon Nalia Award and so much more. African Junior Day Foundation, a pan-African non-profit organization committed to promoting Africa and anything Africa. For more inquiries, call plus one seven one eight eight two two five 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 or email us at daylightafrica at gmail.com. Be there. America Open Market. AO Market. The best digital market for humanity is a free multilingual borderless market open to international sellers with various languages included. With America Open Market, you may start selling in minutes after filling out the form comprehensive dashboard where you understand your sales orders and customers is available you get paid directly securely and instantly on the america open market you can sell your house car electronic laptop cd player boombox phone headphones furniture and clothing and anything on AmericaOpenMarket.com where all your sales and customer needs are met. Register as a merchant today. You will not regret becoming a vendor at America Open Market. For further inquiries, contact us at aomarket at gmail.com. AO Market, best digital marketplace for humanity. Thanks for watching World Inkers Network today. We have some McNoxie's yeah. poetry, and uh, we'd love to gratefully hear from you uh, when you're in your works. Yes. Hello. Yes. Am I audible? Uh huh. Am I audible? Can you hear yeah. me? Yes. Okay. Okay. Please repeat. What did you ask? I couldn't. You yeah. can go ahead and read your, a couple. Of, you know, maybe two or three poems if you'd like. Oh. Okay. 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 So first, uh, let me read from my debut book, The Sense Was the For One. Mm -hmm. so. The title of the poem that I'm reciting now is The Ineffable Love. Wasn't it me? who always believed in you. You took me by your side, accepted me, gave me the strength to stand consequences. Wasn't it you who I always needed? Who would have thought about your ineffable love? Yes, I have realized that you were the one always behind my success, the reason for my happy days. But when? When shall we spend days into some far strand and find to our content some beautiful moments? Ah, a feeling of joy and ecstasy fills my heart. You're still in my heart as fresh as dewdrops 
on a winter morn, you're still in my heart every single moment. I remember you. You're still in my heart, though I never thought you would be the only one I love. You'll always remain in my soul. As silence surrounds me, undesired thoughts pierce my mind beautifully into a mind so full of thoughts, each desire as delicate as a spider web. My heart and mind surrenders, distanced from reality. Sensation of numbness invades my body, sinking me deeper and deeper into the ocean of dreams, wishing to be taken away to the world where I can live things my way. Yes, to a world where I can have things my way. Thank you. This is a poem from my first book. Uh, would I read uh, another one from the same book? Hello? Sure, go ahead. Yes, sure, go ahead. Yes. Okay. So, mm -hmm. rhythm lost. Just as I said that some words inspire, I translated one word, and from that one word, just rhythm lost. From that rhythm lost, I created this poem. So, rhythm lost. Why is it so that I've lost the rhythm of my life? The loneliness I have had has engulfed me. Come and take me from the sea of while I'm marooned. Why am I perturbed always with no ponchon for anything? As I saunter by the beach, I see and feel the sea is calm and the world unfathomably fair. Why am I feeling like rust in shade? And why does my heart fluctuate betwixt blind hopes and blind despair? Come and make me feel me again. This is the rhythm lost. But as it sounds, it is something rhythm lost. As I so told you, my first poem, uh, my first uh, poetry book was everything positive. There is a sound of uh, negativity here. So after a few days, I created another one, rhythm rejuvenated. The actually these uh, poems are my favorite. You can say from the, my last book. So I would like to read the. Uh, answer for rhythm lost rhythm rejuvenated hope i am audible yes dustin yes. yes okay so this is uh, rhythm rejuvenated was it a dream nay it wasn't how pleasant it is to be me again the sun the moon even the foamy sea seem to be in love with me each day a beauteous day calm and free as i lie under the rolling comb of grass listening to the chirping of the birds i wake and feel there is that there are no more shades of darkness no ageless ambiguity of things i longed for music and strong wine with feet and sultry fire. My heart is filled with the ecstasy of love. Oh, how pleasant it is to be me again. Have I really lost the rhythm of my life? Nay, I haven't. Thank you. This is the, uh, the counter, the answer for rhythm lost, rhythm rejuvenated. So uh, shall I carry on reading from my latest yes. book, Waltzing Words? Yes, I'd love to hear. Okay. I shall read. Okay, just a second. I'm searching for the uh, thing. Uh, just one poem I'd love to read. Surreptitious mind. Just a second. 44. 
I want to thank our viewers today. You can subscribe to our channel. Okay. Okay. Uh, hi, everyone. Uh, this is a poem from my second book, Waltzing Words, and the title of the poem is uh, Surreptitious Smile. Tired of smiling, yet I wear it all the time. No one knows it's forced or fake. I feel lonely counting sheep when the whole world sleeps. And I, I lie all alone in my bed, listening to a distant flute, plaintively weeping and wailing. The uncanny darkness stabs and shatters my ethereal dreams into splinters. And as the night coagulates, my eyes dampen with tears of despair, of regret, of hurt. But the counterfeit smile on my lips hide it all. None is there to wipe those dew drops, for no one knows they can't go beyond my smile to reach my tears, which are contained and never flow down. I was tainted by dark since long. I tried to shine through like the sun behind the clouds, but the thick black blanket swallows me full. There's no light encroaching my shadow behind the veil of darkness. We are close together, yet poles apart. The moon peeps in through the broken window pane as I try to shed my tears to drain my eyes dry, but it seems I have lost the rhythm of life. No shoulder to rest my tired head while I try unsuccessfully to wipe off my smile that refuses to get eclipsed and continues to stand guard to keep my tears encapsulated and captive within my eyes. Thank you. Wonderful. I love the, the love the use of um, especially like your you know your beach images and and I, I like the love poems a lot quite quite a bit. They're, they're very interesting. Yeah. Thanks for sharing those. So you mentioned earlier that you know students and, and your your life as a principal kind of inspires you and your poetry. How, how does that happen? I mean, are there specific things that you write about that are related to your your efforts at your uh, at your uh, school or uh, is there a, like a you know, in situations no. that you see regularly that kind of make, you know, make you think a little bit? Uh, yes, but exactly uh, when I write, uh, I don't, when, if, if at all, I'm angry and also, of, uh, of course, I don't write anything about my uh, school children. Oh, those are all happy moments only I create. But uh, of mm -hmm. course, uh, with school related things, I, uh, never wrote. Of course, I have in mind to write short stories. There are a lot of incidents there in school, mm -hmm. which can be jotted down in story form, but not in poetry, but not in poetry. Poetry is totally something different from me. Whatever I express uh, my uh, emotions or maybe sometimes pent up emotions, you can say, mm -hmm. those things I jot down. What differences do you see between uh, prose and poetry? Sometimes I see that question come up and, and it doesn't have a very strict yeah, answer. Yes. That, yes, uh, definitely different. Different in a sense in poetry. Uh, we express it in a few words, the feelings, you have to analyze it. And obviously prose, we can be very explicit, whatever we feel, whatever, is there, you, we have to jot it down explicitly. I think uh, that is the basic difference between prose and poetry as far as, uh, from my side, as, I, as far as I think. That is the basic difference. Hmm. Uh, you have to understand uh, that there is whatever, po poetry can be interpreted, but prose, I don't think so, that is interpreted. It's very explicit. It is understood. Mm -hmm. Hmm. 
So what uh, advice would you leave our viewers with in the conclusion of the program today? Uh, love all. Let us unite. Forget violence. Read poetry. Write poetry. Enjoy poetry. And I think we should not use some bombastic type word, words in poetry. Let mm -hmm. the layman understand poetry. I want poetry to be written in such a way that even the layman can understand poetry. Whatever you feel, write it down. Express it. Let the world know what you feel. And there is the message of love for humanity, I think. This is my message to the viewers. And really, Dustin, I'm honored to be featured here. Absolutely. In the, Thank you. Uh, would you like to give any shout outs or thank yous to friends and family and supporters of your work? Yes, yes, everyone. Uh, I would, uh, I, from my side also, I would uh, like to offer my thanks uh, to everyone in the studio uh, with World Incas Network. I will definitely, my regards, my love, my wishes, my thanks, everything mm -hmm. to you. I'm really honored and happy to be with you uh, in the studio, whoever is in the studio, the, all the technical persons and everyone, the Parrot TV, uh, everyone, uh, I wish them from my heart. Love you all. I love you all. Well, thank you. We love you too. And just to have a good excellent afternoon and, or good evening for you, it would be time for you know time to rest so you've been watching world inkers network and if you haven't subscribed to our channel please do and like and and share our content and just feel free to get in touch with me and uh on facebook if you are interested in being on the program and remember you can donate to the program at paypal at paypal.me slash ny parrot that's paypal.me slash ny parrot and that's a good way to support the programming we do and to help us continue to make it accessible and free and, and entertaining for everyone out there who enjoys the program. And also, if you want to be on the program, you can get in touch with me at literarycorner at newyorkparrot.com or um, publication.worldinkers at gmail.com to be on the program. Just send your bio, a headshot. And a few sample works with that and make sure you address, you know, that you're wanting to be on the program in your email. So that way I know. Uh, but thanks for watching today. And thanks to Manaksha um, Man Man for being on the program. Manaksha. Okay. Sorry, names sometimes are troubling. <laughs> thank yeah, you so much Manakshi. for being on the program. Manakshi, thank, thank you so Manakshi. much. It's wonderful thank to be you. on the program. Have an excellent day, you guys out there, and uh, keep watching this program and be back here on Tuesday and ne this next week at uh, 2 p.m. And we'll see you then. Get to writing. Bye. In a world where the quality of information available to poorer communities is doctored, tainted, and sometimes regressive, where the world's fake news have come to mean other people's opinions, it is vital to rely on news platforms with journalists who have feet on the ground and can report the truth. New York Parrot, a New York-based national and global news outlet, is changing the narratives of media operations. We focus on the news that matters, like seven parments, entrepreneurship, finances, health, security, politics, and more. We strive to curb violence, racial and economic discrimination, and to promote peace and social economic development of multiculturally diverse world. As we give voice to the people, we also give your business a voice and make it heard. Get your products and services off the ground by advertising on our fast-growing platform. With so much of daily visits to New York Parrot, you can't afford to be invisible to prospective clients on the website they trust the most. Our post reach millions of people across the New York state and around the world. Advertising on our new site will unlock an audience of thousands of potential customers on your doorstep. New York Parrot is born to prosperously speak 